from the Oakland Hills to Jack London Square, from the port to the Coliseum, this is Talk of the Town, an in-depth conversation about the people and issues important to Oakland. Hello, I'm Dave Clark, and welcome to Talk of the Town. This is a very special guest I want to introduce you to. He's a good friend, he's a tremendous educator, and a great part of the fabric of the Bay Area and the Oakland area. He's born and raised. My guest is Dr. Jamal Cooks, the new president of Chabot College. First of all, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. I am so glad that you're here, and I remember how you and I first met, you were with we were with another president of a college, yes. Dr. David Johnson of Merritt College, but talk to me first. How does it feel to be the president of a college, Chabot College? Well, first of all, Dave, thanks for the invitation. Yeah. Thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to kind of share my experience and journey. Um, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, the how does it feel today yeah. actually is day 100. <laughs> yeah. So this is kind of interesting wow. to be here with you yeah. on day 100. I'm going to stop saying the days after today. Uh, yeah. That, that is my it. promise to myself yeah. and, and others. Uh, how does it feel? It, it feels great. It feels great to be in a position to, uh, to impact change, to be able to provide opportunities for people to get jobs, for uh, people to be able to transfer to four-year colleges, to be able to live their dreams and aspirations. And so... I'm just happy to be be a small part of that. Yeah. You you have a lot of aspirations I, I want to hear about. Um, you bo born and raised in Oakland. So born... Bo okay, born, raised. Raised in Oakland. Yeah. Absolutely raised Tell in Oakland. Tell me about growing up here. Yeah. Raised in Oakland, in uh, East Oakland, mm -hmm. um, on 57th Avenue off of Seminary in East 14th, and uh, grew up as an only child, and uh, uh, had to learn very quickly how to navigate... Um, uh, community. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. I, I used to catch the 83 uh, down these four, 82 and 83, and the 40 down Foothill, and catch the bus. You know, kept walking to school at kindergarten in uh, second grade, catching the bus at fourth and fifth grade. Very, very different time. Very, very different time. But uh, always tried to make sure to keep education first always tried to make sure to keep my, uh, my morals and my values in mm -hmm. line, and always just wanted to make my parents proud. And so those are some of the things that kept me uh, kind of in line as I was learning to navigate the neighborhood and the community. I was going to ask you, what did that come from you innately, but it was your parents yes. that instilled that into you. Absolutely. Talk about that. Yeah, so my father was in the Air Force. He was a uh, retired Air Force. Yeah. Uh, he was he retired after 23 years, soon after I was born. My m mother and I grew, were here in Oakland while he was doing two other tours in Anchorage, Anchorage Alaska. And uh, when he retired, he came back to Oakland in, uh, I think this was 77. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my mother sold Avon okay. door to door yes. just so that she could meet new people. <laughs> and uh, that was kind of how I grew up. My father really, um, really emphasized hard work, um, doing it right the first time, um, integrity. Mm -hmm. All you have is your name and your word. Um, and my mother was very social mm -hmm. and uh, was always like the kind of the life of the party and uh, taught me a lot about um, how to kind of maneuver um, with, with, with people and yeah. just making sure that you have very, very good relationships. Wow. How would you describe yourself in one sentence? I'm not trying to take you through what you went through yeah. during your interview process, but just curious, how would you describe yourself in one sentence? As a professional, as a person? Or Who you pick? <laughs> <laughs> um, in one sentence, I would say that I am very driven, um, I'm very loyal, and I'm very committed to making sure that every student that I come in contact with has an opportunity and can say that they had access and someone to support them in their endeavors. I, I don't do this for, for money. I don't do this for titles. I do this for just a simple thank you. That, that, that's really what, what drives me is to be able to make sure that I'm, being a, I'm contributing positively to our uh, Oakland community, to our Bay Area neighborhoods, 
and um, ultimately just helping people reach their dreams. Yeah, you know, I missed your, your recent celebration yeah. I, because I had another obligation at the last minute, but what's been the reaction to you as a new president of Chabot College? I think a lot of excitement. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of excitement. I think a lot of excitement um, on campus. Um, I think there's a, a, uh, a new energy, right, that, um, that I'm bringing to the campus. Um, I think there's also, I'm in the community quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, my, my social media um, platforms have kind of been, uh, been blowing up a little bit um, yeah. because I'm, I'm posting when I'm at different events, different community events, different partnerships, and um, the response has been very, very positive. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one thing I would say that uh, some folks have probably shared with me is that I just make sure to pace myself. And, um, right. and I just kind of say to them, I I've been going this pace the whole time. Mm -hmm. um, this is nothing new. Um, I may just be new to this role as the president of Chabot College, but I'm not new to being a leader and I'm not new to, um, to working hard. Interesting. Yeah. Um, there's so many things I want to ask you. <laughs> uh, when we first talked, yes. we talked about the importance of mentoring young black boys, yeah. young men. Why is that important for you? A couple reasons. Uh, mentorship, being an African-American man, yeah. uh, as a young boy, most of the mentors were uh, probably coaches, yeah. maybe one or two teachers. Uh, but it wasn't, it, it wasn't a, a plethora of folks just waiting around to, yeah. to, to help you. Um, growing up in East Oakland, there's a lot, uh, many of the other male Figures that I saw were, um, you know, may have been selling drugs or, or doing something that wasn't very positive or illegal. Mm -hmm. And so um, to gravitate towards coaches and teachers was something that was very important. And so as I grew and uh, started my professional career, I wanted to be able to be that type of a yeah. influence for not only black, black boys, but for all, all students, but mm -hmm. particularly knowing the, uh, what they have to go through knowing what the road is, the journey, the challenges, the ups, the downs, to be able to work with them um, to be able to be successful. That's important. Absolutely. Talk about being a black man, an African-American man, yeah. as a president of a college, and the different people you have to navigate and people at your level. Yeah. What is that like? First of all, I'm proud and, and, and honored to be the 10th president of Chabot College. Um, there are only, out of 116 campuses, I believe there's only about 20, 22 African-American chancellors and presidents in the entire system. Um, I believe the last count there were uh, 12 or 13 African-American men. So to be, to represent, 10, be part of the representation of 10% of the college presidents that are African-American males, um, I'm, I'm ecstatic. Wow. Right. So I and I so I think that's one part. I think another part is that there's also a um, the pressure that you put on yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. You the pressure of knowing that um, that I am in a very privileged position mm -hmm. um, that I have worked hard. I, I checked the boxes academically and professionally. So no, no, no dis, disregard to mm -hmm. that. But mm -hmm. that uh, there is a pressure that comes along with it yeah. just in the office itself. And then particularly coming from Oakland um, and the love and support I've gotten from uh, from everyone in the town, that's been awesome. Uh, for the folks that are in the community college system that have given uh, support and encouragement and advice, that's been awesome. And, and then to have a network that's been created across the state mm -hmm. and even across the country mm -hmm. has, been, has been great. Um, as it pertains to uh, um, being an African-American male as a president, one of the things that I think is important is our connections with HBCUs, with historical yeah. black colleges and universities. Uh, the California Community College system has a transfer agreement existing right now right. with about 35 campuses. Um, we have one campus in particular, Miles College, which is in Alabama, which I believe is in Fairfield right next to Birmingham. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a colleague there that I've worked with professionally for 20 something years who's now the provost. And what we were able mm -hmm. to do is to have a, as they're going through the HBCU transfer agreement, process, we uh, at my investiture um, a couple weeks ago, we signed a kind of a college commitment yeah. to one another that we're, they're going to work with us 
to create a pipeline mm. for our students to be able to go uh, to Miles College. And we're going to try to not only have them get accepted, um, but to hopefully be able to go at a very, very reduced cost as well. And so those are the kinds of things yeah. I'm trying to bring um, uh, to Chabot College as resources and different programs. And you as president can help make that happen. Yes, sir. Or make it happen. Yes, sir. And, and I'll also say yeah. to that, um, it's a very interesting uh, position to be a African-American male president Oh, that r is running an HSI, a Hispanic Serving Institution. Yeah. Right? Uh, we're about 42% Latinx, about 15% Asian, about 15% white, and uh, close to 10 or 12% African American. And so, what's really uh, interesting and, and fun as yeah, well yeah. is making sure that everyone is getting what they need. Yeah. Uh, we are a, a best in class uh, HSI, meaning that we have, we've not only gotten one, but two. Uh, HSI grants, one of which is a $5 million uh, HSI STEM grant. Bravo. Which is the, the largest grant that we've ever uh, received in the history of the college. So, That is great. Thank you. That is great. Now, we, we're, we're talking a lot about African Americans and education as well, but you're concerned about non-African American people, white people as well yes. on the campus. Yes. Uh, my responsibility as college president is to worry about everyone that's on my campus, yeah. right? So, so students is one aspect, is making sure that we have the proper programs and projects that are set up for their success, right? So we're, we're an industry leader as it pertains to programs, and um, particularly around learning communities and affinity groups as well. So what I mean by that is that we're the home of Puente, which is a learning community for uh, Latinx students that want to transfer to a four-year school. It helps, they, they're, it's a kind of a cohorted model and they move through with, the, right, with one another right, right. to be able to support each other to transfer. We are also the home of Emoja as well, which is a very similar pro program for African-American students. Yeah. Uh, we now, from that, we have two new ones. Uh, one is the Movement Group, which is for Asian, uh, Asian Americans, and we also have the uh, Amnesians Unite, which is mm. for our uh, Tongan, Samoan, Pacific Islander students. And so oh. we really support and encourage uh, the celebration of affinity group programs. Along with that, we also have um, support groups like Striving Black Brothers, uh, mm -hmm. which is for African-American men. We have uh, My Sister's Keeper, which is for African-American women. Uh, we have a number of other programs that are around uh, being socially and politically active, Change It Now. Uh, we have about 17 or 18 special programs Man. at our campus that I believe is one of the most, um, the most in the state in terms of being able to support our students in that way. And I think when we talk about um, top-notch uh, programs, it's not only just for the affinity groups, it's not only just for the uh, uh, basic needs and mm -hmm. helping students yeah. with food pantry and those kinds of things. We have a student hub that we're opening up in the spring that's, um, that's going to focus on basic needs and everything in that building is going to be free for students. Really? Food, oh, really? clothes, <laughs> uh, counseling, all those different things. But it's also around our academic programs as well. And so we have top-notch programs around uh, nursing, dental hygiene, um, we also have a brand new fire facility that was a um, collaboration between the city of Hayward and also Hayward Fire and Chabot College, yeah. a new fire facility as well. Um, and also I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about um, the, the number of students that end up transferring uh, to four-year colleges yeah. as well to extend their, uh, their academic uh, uh, aspirations. So very excited about the work that we're doing there. That's great. Now, if you're just joining us, our guest is Dr. Jamal Cooks, the new president of Chabot College here in the Bay Area, and I'm so glad that he is here. What has been the toughest part of making the transition, or one of them, <laughs> of being the new president? Yeah, I would say it's, it's just the, the breadth and depth of information. There's a lot of information that comes through my, through my email, uh, text, um, those those kinds of different uh, platforms, and just the the a number of people that you end up meeting yeah. um, at a variety of different events. And so I would say, uh, in the first hundred days, it's really 
um, being able to kind of manage yeah, the, 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 the people, too. the information. Um, and I think what, what's really important is also making sure that uh, that we have positive relationships. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, as, as one of my colleagues, uh, uh, Dr. Poncel, says that, that there's a certain level of civility that we have to have with one another, being able to say please and thank you and being able to smile at people and shake hands. Like to me, those are just normal things that we all should be doing. Right. And I think that, that that's become a lost art. Um, having grown up in a, in a house with a father from the Air Force where I grew up saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yeah, uh -huh. yes, sir, no, sir. I'm only uh, going to tell you one <laughs> time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? I mean, so, so that's just who I am. But I've realized that um, that, that goes a long way. When you're, when you're meeting people, when you're trying to build relationships. And, and I also think the other part that's, uh, um, that I keep in mind is about being consistent. Yeah. People want to know who they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. They don't want to uh, uh, come in one day and you're in a bad mood or come in another day in a really good mood. Like, they want to know that you're going to be the same person who you are all the time. Yeah. And whether that's from my, from my parents, whether that's you know, growing up from East Oakland, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty consistent. Yeah. And I'm very clear about what my objective is, which is to create the best community college in California. And whatever those standards are, whatever those characteristics are, whatever those measures are, I'm at the point where I'm trying to collect that information, figure that out, so that we can ultimately um, become the best in the state. Wow. Yeah, as we begin to start to wind down, we can't leave out yeah. your other half. Yes. Who is... <laughs> who is a major part of your life yes. and making you who you are. Uh, yes. Talk about her. Yes. My wife, uh, Charmone, is, is my rock. She's, um, we've been married for 24 years. Um, I've, I've, we've kind of grown up together. I've known her since college. And um, she does a great job of managing uh, not only me, yeah. uh, but also our two children, uh, Jamila and Cameron, and uh, running the household while still working and being um, just being a good, a great community advocate as well. She she does a lot for students. She does a lot for families mm. um, in in the uh, East Oakland, and um, I just I just think that she she's a, a golden a, a gem not only to me but also for other folks in the neighborhood and the community. I, I can tell. Thank I believe you. it. I appreciate that. Why is it so important? And one of the reasons I really wanted to get yeah. you on TV with me on Talk of the Town. Why is it so important, the imagery of you, not only you, but uh, of African-American men to the world? Yeah. So w one of the things around social media, for example, yeah. that I've, I've had uh, conversations with my children about. Yeah. So, for example, my daughter... Uh, we did, she didn't get a cell phone until high school. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why we did that was centered around this idea that uh, students and children, um, they get a whole lot of images thrown at them, right. a whole lot. Right. And unfortunately, in social media, news, whatever, wherever those platforms and places are, um, there's not always positive images of African American men. Mm -hmm. Not that they're necessarily manufactured, right. but that... It, it, it is what it is. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so what I think is important is that um, um, in giving my daughter the phone, it was trying to have her be at a point to where she could d discern positive images from not so positive images yeah. and be able to get them to be able to offset each other. Well, I think that's important for us, particularly as African-American educators, to be able to show that uh, you can make it out of an urban area. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to have a plan. You have to be committed. You have to be dedicated. But you can make it out of yeah. a, a, an urban area that you can be successful and uh, have education become something that that works for you. Um, you can be an African-American student, African-American male and earn a Ph.D. Even when high school may not have been very easy to yeah, you. Right. Maybe when college wasn't very easy to you, but that there's there's a possibility that you can go, that you are smart enough, you are intelligent enough. It's just about focusing and figuring out the, the kind of the cheat code of how to be successful yeah. in yeah. an academic setting, right? That being a president of a Hispanic serving institution that I can talk about uh, DEIAA, diversity, equity, inclusion, accessibility, and anti-racist initiatives, and that that is are my number one goal, and that's the lens in which we do all of our work around 
academic success and workplace uh, development. And also being able to say that you can be a community member it's not about the, the money, it's not about the title, but that you too can be a very active community member with educational uh, agencies, with community-based organizations, with helping your community to be the best neighborhood that it can be. And so I just think that um, I'm proud and happy to be able to uh, call folks like David yeah. Johnson, uh, yeah. president at, at, Merritt. at Merritt College, yeah. um, a good friend and colleague, and to be able to work with him in, as we in some sense, uh, level the playing field with these other mm -hmm. positive images that, that need to be seen. I'm so glad you said that. Uh, you're already a success in so many different ways. Thank you. I'm so glad you took the time to be with us. Is there any one thing you still want to happen? I mean, I'm sure there may be a million, yeah. but is there one shining, burning thing you yeah. want to happen at your ball? Yeah. I think, I think there's a lot of things that go into um, as we try to move towards being yeah. number one community college in the state. I think there's uh, continued efforts with, uh, with our city, with Hayward and our, yeah. and our service area. Uh, actually, last night, uh, we just uh, signed a, a proclamation. There was a proclamation yeah. by Mayor Salinas in Hayward that uh, called uh, Hayward an education city because we're one of two uh, cities in the Bay Area that have a uh, K-12, a community college, and also a four-year school that would be hit the city of Hayward and also uh, Berkeley. And so there was a proclamation at the city, um, city wow. hall um, last night at the city council meeting to, to show that and, and represent that and celebrate that. I think that what else do I want to do? I want to do more collaborative uh, efforts with um, colleges and also with community-based organizations across the country, um, like I did with Miles College. Yes. I'm having conversations with um, Erickson Institute in Chicago about doing work together. Um, I think a, a third piece would really be um, changing the narrative about community college. Ah. Changing the narrative about ah. community college. And I say that to say that it's not just 13th grade. Mm -hmm. right? I think that the way that, that I've seen how Chabot has worked and the way that I'm promoting it is that it becomes an option. It becomes an option to be able to start taking dual enrollment classes while you're in high school that, have, that count for college, yeah. right? That, that high school students can take for free, right? It comes with the idea that if you go to a community college, you can pretty much come out of those first two or three years with no debt. You can, you can go to a community college and have an automatic admission into a, uh, a number of schools across the state and across the country, including HBCUs, and go there. And if you have A's, get A grades, excellent grades while you're in the, the two-year at the community college, that you can go and probably someone will pay for you to go to a four-year school. Interesting. So it, it becomes, community college becomes a, another option, and with the right plan, uh, you can uh, ultimately be very successful academically and in terms of finding a, not a job, this is one thing that I've, I've, I'm emphasizing, not just finding, preparing folks for jobs, but preparing them for careers, because that's going to be long lasting. Keep doing great things. You know, I'll be cheerleading for you no yes, matter sir. what. You are made for TV, you are perfect. <laughs> And you're made for who you are as Thank an you. educator and a leader. Our guest has been Dr. Jamal Cooks, the new president of Chabot College. Excellence from the day I met you. Thank you. Uh, I'm proud of you. And please give my, my best to your wife as well. I definitely will. And you as well. I will do that. <laughs> I will do I, that. Thank you very much for the opportunity. We will talk. We will, we will continue to follow each other in great things. Yes, sir. And I know the college will benefit. At Dr. Jamal Cooks. And, and I thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Talk of the Tech.